that one on your own. Uh, hello, welcome. My name is Adam Levy. This is Guitar Tips, my weekly video blog. Each week I post just a little short video here. It's not quite a guitar lesson, it's more just a guitar uh, idea. Something for you to play with in your practice time or your composing time or on the bandstand in the studio, what have you. I believe this is episode 52, which means uh, we've got a year of these. You can go back and binge watch them if you like, or just do um, pick the ones that look interesting to you. Usually in the title, I try and describe what's going on. Uh, this week's tip uh, is don't forget the open strings. Don't forget the open strings. So uh, one thing I noticed um, is that when people start playing the guitar, they tend to start in this open position where you're you're fingering the strings here, but there's you know there's some open strings involved. Open strings just mean strings that you're not uh, fretting. You're, you're, they're just ringing as they are. So that's chords like these chords that you learn. And then uh, as soon as you start to learn bar chords or uh, you know jazz chords, kind of drop two voicings and what have you, then you leave all that stuff behind, and uh, you know there's a whole world of guitar that's not in this open position, that's higher up the neck, that still uses uh, open strings. So. I mean, a really simple idea right here would be uh, you playing this as an A flat major seven. That's A flat. That's fretted. G open and E flat on top. If you you wanted, you could you could fill it out with a C on top, and then you've got all four notes. But even just this little three note fragment is nice. Um, you could play G major seven, also using the G. I've got F sharp, G, D. Um, you can use other open strings like your B string. This is a nice uh, A flat minor. A flat minor 6. That's a nice voice. And I'm playing A flat, B flat, B natural, or C flat, and uh, F on top. So that's a nice voicing. Um, you know, there's a C major 7 voicing here that uses both the E and the B string. G, C, B, E. That's nice. And uh, really, you could just experiment and, and continue that process. Um, you know, one way to do it is just to grab a shape and move. This is a shape with a hole in it. I'm playing F, G, C. So the outside notes are a fifth apart. And you could just move up chromatically. That's I don't know. I might think of that as like F sharp seven flat nine. That's just G and D. That's a little bit redundant. A flat major seven, A seven or A minor seven, B flat six or B flat minor six. We don't know because it's not defined. You know. G major 7 here, again, G, B, F sharp. And, I mean, there's other names for what these could be. I'm just saying what, what occurs to me off the top of my head. So that's one way is just to move one shape around. Another way is just think, uh, you know, okay, here's our B. B could be the root of something. So um, if I play some other B kind of stuff, or I could say, okay, this is B7, so I'm playing F sharp, A, B. That could be B7 or B minor 7. Um, B minor 7 flat 5. 
So it could be the root. What if it's the, I'll just go down. What if it's the seventh? Well, here it's B is the seventh of a C major seven. This could also be C minor major seven. So it's the natural seven, right? It could be the flat seven of some kind of C sharp chord. So here would be playing um, F or E sharp, G sharp, C sharp. And the B becomes the, the flat seven, which makes it a C sharp dominant chord. It could be C sharp minor seven, C sharp minor seven, flat five. Um, those are things that occur to me as the as it being the, the flatted seventh or minor seventh. It could be the six, right? So it could be a D chord with a six on it. D minor six. And uh, it could be the sharp five. It could be some kind of E flat dominant chord with a sharp five. So I'm playing E flat, G, D flat, and then the B. It could be the natural five. It could be some kind of E chord. Or, or, you know. So I think of how this B could function as the root, the natural seventh, the minor seventh, the sixth, the flat sixth, or sharp five, or flat thirteen. Um, the five and all, all the way down. That's another way to do it. Um, of course, you can also use open strings in um, scales. Um, there's, a, there's a Jim Campolongo piece that I've been uh, really into playing lately called The Prettiest Girl in New York. And uh, there's a passage that repeats throughout the melody that goes like this. Uh, excuse me. Jim didn't invent that, you know, players like uh, Chet Atkins used a lot of those kind of sounds. It's been around for a while, but um, Jim just put it neatly into a nice piece of music that he wrote, uh, which you should check out. It's called The Prettiest Girl in New York. But the, the passage, it sounds like, if you're not paying attention, it sounds like it's just a, a, a D scale starting on G and coming down. strings at all. Okay. But the way Jim plays it in particular is G, F sharp, then open E, D, C sharp, B, open, G, or excuse me, A, open G, F sharp, E, open D, C sharp, back to D. So... Bill Frizzell is another modern day player who has done a lot with open strings. I'm actually going to put a, a link down in the description below uh, to an instructional video that uh, Bill Frizzell made years ago where he talks about open strings. Um, Jim Hall, a jazz guitar player, he's uh, he used open strings. Um, it's just a way of getting some different kind of sustain and color and using the guitar for as it is, not trying to pretend that it's a piano or a trumpet or something else, but really using the tuning of the guitar to do something particular. Uh, Terrega was a Spanish composer who was aware of this. He, he wrote on the guitar for the guitar. This is just a little passage from one of his pieces. Mm. Here it is. Right. So you could certainly play that in position, but by getting the open strings involved, it makes the guitar sing a little bit more. And it makes it more dramatic because you stay on this one string and you have to go for this note. It's more, more vocal-like, really. Uh. Obviously, there's open. 
and bass notes. I'm sure any of you who have studied classical guitar are going to comment down below that I'm playing it completely wrong, and I'm, that's fine. I am playing it wrong. I'm not trying to uh, to show you how to play Spanish classical guitar. The point is just to use open strings. You can use them in your chord voicings. You can use them in scale playing. You can use them in uh, your improvisation. Um, you know, if you're going to improvise with them, you're going to have to practice playing scales with open strings in them a lot, and not just practice in the practice room using position playing and then hope that on the gig the open strings just happen. They're not going to just happen. You have to practice it, just like any any other element of music that you want to get going on in your playing. So that's the tip for this week. Uh, don't forget the open strings. Don't forget the open strings. They're there. They're calling to you. Adam, Adam, play us. Please play us. Um, did you hear that? I think I heard something. Anyway, uh, you can hit the subscribe button down below for a new tip each and every Friday. Um, if you like these tips, please share them with your friends, uh, on social media, wherever you like to share things. Uh, please share guitar tips uh, just for you. But they're not just for you. They're for other people too. So don't be a greedy grabber with your guitar tips. Um, that's about it. I'm Adam Levy for Guitar Tips in Los Angeles, California. Stay tuned and take good care. I'm talking to you.